So the way I was going to treat this, since we didn't like really have an episode right up, and this is like the initiation of subscribers only version mm. of Loudmouth, I was going to treat it like kind of like a catch up and a think tank as to what we want this to be. <clears throat> I think okay. as we go, then we'll have like people who get the Zoom to come in yeah. and do this. But for right now, I didn't bring anybody in because we haven't really <laughs> formatted what we want this to be. But um, yeah, so I, what I was going to do is visually have this on YouTube that we can yeah. use it on YouTube. And then audio wise on Red Circle, it would be behind the paywall. Perfect. So um, that's what I was going to do. So I, I didn't really pick a topic for tonight because this is new. Okay. Okay. This is not our um, freaking animated faces on mm -hmm. stereo. And um, we don't have people popping up in here. So visually, I am Shan. Visually, that is Greg. And... Uh, this is loud mouth stereo visually what's up yes indeed. so i was late as fuck because this agent wanted to ask 21 questions at like the 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 last minute and i was like okay so i'm really supposed to be off at this time but it went into like 6 30 and i was like i'm not driving home prairie dogging so i was like let me go ahead and use the bathroom and so here I am. Um, I try to get out of traffic, but that was hit or miss. Um, yeah, so the girls are awake. Hopefully they don't, they don't come in here, but today is my Friday. Tomorrow I'm off. Um, I'm jealous. Listen, I just. I'm absolutely hating. I don't understand why we need five day work weeks. Nobody needs them. Okay. But we could do it in four or three and be done. Yep. So, um, yeah, that is that is my week. I have been waking up and working on five hours of sleep minimum. Well, maximum. Mm -hmm. Last night I recorded with Baylor to like almost 1 a.m. My oh, wow. time. And then I had to turn around and get up for the girls at like 530. So, mm. yeah, every time I eat throughout the day, I'm tired of shit. Um, so, what's been going on with you? Too much. Too much. Uh, I'm not going to go into a long, like, diatribe about it. You and I talked about it, so I don't have to, like, regurgitate it, right? Mm -hmm. But for anybody who's listening, um, started a new job, happy about that. Um, came into a little bit of, cont like, contact with the client that we don't like. We just have this one individual who is, is kind of, like headstrong and i thought it was my boss so, um but it's actually not her it's the client and my boss was kind of like getting the blame for it because she wasn't there so her mm -hmm. and i talked today and i was like all right cool like you know shit's shaking out good so that you'd be a it up. bitch but it's not yeah, you i was like yo yeah i yeah. was just like bro that's a lot that's a lot but outside of that um podcast stuff I'm only going to say this once in 2023. I promise mm -hmm. you, this is it. Only time I'm going to say this. Um, if you podcast with somebody, um, make sure you set their ass straight at the beginning. Um, okay. I've had to, <laughs> I've had to set some people, when I say people, multiple people straight mm -hmm. in January that I had to set straight in October that I also had to, you know, do in July. This like should kids. not be a quarterly thing. Exactly. This shit is disgusting at this point. So, you know, we, we have the co-host, Q. Uh, I can say his name publicly because he probably ain't going to care anyway. Mm -hmm. But he likes to record from wherever the fuck he's at at that current moment. Man, Audio that's... quality to me and our editor now, he's gotten so pissed off with the content. He's like, bro, I'm not going to edit the show if he keeps presenting like that. He's yeah. like, y'all sound good. I can tell it's him every week. And I was like, we can't go through this. This is not the behavior that I want for our content in 2023. Mm -hmm. So long story less long, I told him like, yo, we're in year five of podcasting for Young, Black, and Bothered. 
No more of this shit. We have to figure it out. And when I say figure it out, talking about you, not anybody else, you. So there's that. Then we came along with the, um, God, somebody like text or kind of completely screwed me up. Mm -hmm. But basically we had an issue with time conflicts. So we were initially recording for the past three years at nine o'clock or nine 30 on a Tuesday. Yeah. Simple shit. Um, now they're like, oh, can we record on Thursday? Now, between me, you and the wind, um, we kind of like staying in the house, you and I. Yeah. So Thursdays to us is like, oh, that, that's a reprieve. Like, I'm not going nowhere on Thursday. The streets is expensive. Nobody's going outside. Right. These motherfuckers, we know for a fact they will. Uh, effective whenever the weather breaks. What is that? So spring starts, what, March 20th? March 21st, these motherfuckers going to be outside. You're a liar. And a liar. March 15th, because people be prepping for St. Patrick's. Hey, facts. 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 Hey, actually, you know what? We need to start actually just making St. Patrick's Day the date, like the first day of spring. Because whenever it is, it could fall on a Tuesday or Thursday, Hello? Friday. People are like, hey, we going. It's time we to drink. It's time exactly. to drink. It's time to exactly. drink. So I told them, I was like, bro, like, I don't know what y'all going to do come summer. But I've been down this road before on right. Thursdays outside of me. And I'm not trying to make my scene, you know, myself seem like holier than now. But on Thursdays, everybody's going out. Happy hours, bars, restaurants, dates, dinners and shit like that. The last thing you want to do, <sighs> like when I say the last thing, like you and I can do it because we kind of had that rapport. But mm -hmm. with them wrangling four or five different personalities to record on a Thursday, more importantly, every Thursday. It, it's Listen, I didn't seen, I didn't seen your um your text. Yes, and I'm just like, Doug, I'm exhausted. Yeah. I'm exhausted because if it was if it was a job, mm -hmm. and the the shift starts at nine, yep, on this day, don't bring me all of y'all excuses on why you needed to be at 7 30 why you needed to be at mm -hmm. 10 45 why you need six more minutes like come on like the reality is between you and i and i know it's just you and me but still if we're not going to do the show we don't tell each other five minutes till exactly if we're running late we don't tell each other at the time when we were supposed to record, exactly. like there's going to be a text sent. There's going to be a schedule, you know, exactly. put into play. Or if someone has life happening, like, can we not do this week? Cool. And the other times, I don't need you to tell me what time the show is, Greg. You don't need to tell me what time the show is. Like, I know what Bingo. time the show is. I know where I need to be. And I know what's expected. And I don't know. I feel like it's like but, micromanaging and nobody wants to be in the position to micromanage exactly. a whole group of people when we all adults in space. Exactly. So th this is what I've gathered from it. Like, you know, we, we've had this issue before two, maybe three times. So somebody's like, great. Why do you like even deal with people like that? This is the issue of bringing your friends along with the content that you create. It's it is just how it works. You, I don't want to say you can't, you shouldn't mm -hmm. attempt to start something that is going to monetize with friends who don't align with it at the beginning. And a lot of my friends, when we aligned at the beginning, everybody had the the Bobby Brown complex. Like, oh yeah, like, uh, oh, I'm, I'm, I'm going to be the star. And it's like, no. <laughs> th th there are no stars here. Like, right. you know, we essentially, the Jackson 5, you know, after Mike left, like we just a, a bunch of us who create. But when you think about like promotion, that, that's me. When you think about the docket, that's me. Mm. When you think about who's paying for the editor, who's sending it to the editor, like that's me. And so I feel like those, that type of stuff should be delegated. But I exactly. feel like you would be comfortable delegating mm -hmm. it if you knew you could count on the people. And and that right there. The reason why there is no delegation is because there's no one to delegate to. And mm -hmm. this isn't me shitting on like my podcast hosts and stuff like that, but it's also like we have to hold ourselves accountable for our actions. So right. if I'm fucking up, then I should be able to be like, hey, I'm fucking up. Um, but I've also been down this road before um, with other like previous co-hosts. What I do is, you know, I got friends. I'm like, hey, you know, they're always talking about they want to, you know, podcast, blah, blah, blah. Ooh. I'm like, all mm -hmm. right, come on board. Come on, Young Black and Bothered, right? Mm -hmm. They come on the show and the show 
fluid. It hasn't changed in five years. We've added segments. We've deleted segments, but the show is still the show at the end of the day, right? Mm -hmm. So they come in there with it. It's cohesive. People meet people on the network and stuff like that, and they create their own shows and stuff. Mm -hmm. But what happens is their, their product starts messing up as a result. Like they come into it thinking, okay, this is a kickback. No, it's not a kickback. It's a podcast. Yeah. And there's a difference. Um, people are like, oh, I'm on a podcast. And then when that little phase for them dies down, it becomes a job. It becomes a, oh, I can't do it this week. You know, oh, I'm in a relationship. Oh, I'm in this. I'm in this. <laughs> oh, I, I got all that shit too. <laughs> like like mo most of the shit y'all got, I've had. And I still got to deal with it with multiple people. Yeah. So I'm dealing with different personalities on top of creating this content. I've said for at least, what, three years, like, hey, if you have something you want to talk about on the show, let me know so we can put it in a docket. I can tell you how many times it's happened in three years, right? But there's that. Created sports test. Gave that to Q. We had um, media maintenance. We had a couple other shows that I've done with other people. I'm still friends with these people, but it was like we knew that it was not going to work, which is completely fine. But when it comes to, like, what was it, like, good, bad, and unavailable, for example, right? So that was honestly way too many people on a microphone way too many people it was what i, I don't even want to say people's names but it was what at least three or four women and three guys too so, many cooks in the kitchen yes so anybody who wants reference like these people are still good people right. i'm not making it seem like they're bad people it was just more so there was too many cooks in the kitchen like you said yeah. so we essentially had a meeting and the meeting was like, oh, we want more power from the show. Meanwhile, I'm looking like, okay, so they're going to help me with what the What you mean more power? Yes. It, more it like, say-so? Oh, yeah, more say-so. Well, they you wanted... could have more say-so if you did more of the footwork. Exactly. And it was simple stuff. It was like, okay, can you help like promote the podcast on the social platforms? You couldn't do that. Strike mm. number one. Oh, can you promote it on your own platform? You didn't do that. Strike mm. number two. Can you show up on time? We were supposed to be recording at nine o'clock and I get it. Like people at that time, people come into my house instead of going to like a studio, yeah. like, oh, let's go to a studio. But then the studio that they wanted to go to was two and a half hours away. So mm. like, okay, so y'all want to do this every Thursday. Y'all want to go try, you know, drive two and a half hours to go record for two hours instead of just coming somewhere that's 30 minutes outside of your wheelhouse. Or yeah. if that's the case that everybody agrees on, you have to be like dedicated to do a cluster of shows, not exactly. one show. But let's do three shows in this session, exactly. bust it out, and we don't have to meet up for the rest exactly. of the month. Like, and that was my issue. That was my fault. When I say issue, like that was my problem because I was so excited to hang out with my friends that mm -hmm. these shows were honestly becoming kickbacks. We, we're hanging yeah. out for three hours, four hours, and you know, all you gotta do is press record, right? You press record and you just talking and shooting the shit for four hours. Now, we had a structure, but nothing was cohesive there was no i'm not going to talk before this person it was like okay that person speaking i'm gonna yell over this person and like one time on the mic i was like yo we got to chill with that yeah. and whenever you have to check yourself live on air i would highly suggest any podcaster keep that audio in there keep yourself accountable for mm -hmm. your actions because the person who's editing your show more importantly the person who's listening they know for a fact that you aren't fucking around like obviously right. you can cut out like you know the stutters and stuff like that but that for me, it just mattered because I go back and listen to that episode at least once a month. I'm like, oh, I never want that again. Um, saying that to say <laughs> this though, when it comes to like podcasting, you and I podcast, Baylor, he called me like I, I don't know if he was on like TikTok Live or what, but, but he FaceTimed me. And I'm like, okay, like the rapport I have for y'all is like not just podcasters, but friends as well. Mm -hmm. But friends who want to podcast that do podcast have their own shit and understand the value of it. Yeah. But when you have your own stuff and you're bringing somebody along, they don't understand the value because they feel like, oh, that's just my friend Greg and I'm helping out, you know, I'm helping him out with his little job or his little like side gig and stuff, until they start seeing, oh, you make money off this. Oh, well, where can I get my cut? And and that was kind of like the demise of good, bad and unavailable. Mm -hmm. So the demise of that happened because people were like, oh, well, what's, you know. We're, we're not getting paid for this. I'm like, oh, we have ads. We have ad space. We have money. They're like, oh, can we put this on our taxes? I'm like, yeah. Are you going to mention that you missed 13 episodes? <laughs> are, are you going to mention that? Hello. 
Yeah, like you didn't pay for the microphones. Like I was literally handing out at that, and you know it for a fact. Like I was handing out microphones that were like 200 250 dollars. This is a fact. Like that mic I'm is going, right over there. <laughs> yeah, I'm sitting there, and mind you, like I'm doing it because these are my friends and I want them to do better. Yeah. I want people to have the things that they need that keep them equipped. And it's it's nothing for me because I work for, you know, well, at the time I was writing reviews, but now I still get this stuff to review, you yeah. know, for the YouTube channel. But if they're sending it to me, I'm like, hey, I'm a podcaster. I have, you know, X amount of co-hosts. Can you send me these microphones, right? Mm-hmm. And this was pre-pandemic, what, 2018? So people were still doing podcast structures, kind of like how we're doing, the, you know, this YouTube where we had the microphone, we have the interface and stuff like that. Now we have stereos. We have Clubhouse, if people ever figure that shit out again. Um, you have easier ways of podcasting, and everybody wants to be a podcaster, but not everybody can podcast. And when I say that, like anybody can put a microphone in front of their face and talk, right. but you have to have cadence, flow, dockets. You have to honestly want to record more than just once every like three months. That it, it just is what it is. We've talked yeah. about that in like four episodes, but overall for me that was kind of my way of starting 2023 was mm-hmm. kind of like nipping it in the bud saying we have to figure this shit out now because i'll be 36 what next wednesday and i was like yo yeah your boy's getting old and i, I i'm enjoying it i found three gray hair and i was like you know what yes I'm I'm right so when we started the show on tuesday and i'm i'm gonna end from here we started on tuesday uh, on tuesday the podcast and I hear Q at the bar and I was like, absolutely fucking not. Like, this is not going to happen, bro. Like, we we have to cut it out. So I ended the stereo and then I text. I was like, yo, we can't have that behavior. Mm-hmm. Like, if y'all want to take yourself seriously, then you, you have to, you know, come prepared. Mm-hmm. Especially, you know, what you and I know that we plan on doing that we can't tell people because I don't think it's like in the contract. I- I don't even I don't even feel like it's necessary to tell someone who's not on yeah. a tight time. Like yeah. we know who's on that tight time. Exactly. And that's who I had that discussion with. Yep. Um, but I know the difference between someone who has a podcast, someone who podcasts sometimes, mm-hmm. someone who's like on top of their shit. You know what I'm saying? Right, writing it off, investing in it, yeah, and and really trying to figure out. Where can I find my footing? Bingo. And those are the people that I'm just like, hey, yep. this opportunity is here. Hey, this, because it's just like a reference. Like, I don't want to recommend you for a position where yep. I work if you're just going to show your ass. Yep. Yep. And the, the full transparency for me, like I saw myself like falling off a cliff as a result of the behavior I was allowing. Mm-hmm. At, like the tail end of last year, I was like, all right, I ain't got a podcast this week because it's Thanksgiving. And then we had one show between Thanksgiving and the end of the year. Right. Mm-hmm. And like the scheduling was put off, all that stuff was put off. And it was my fault. The reason mm-hmm. why I know it was my fault is because it was behavior I allowed. So I started to adapt that same behavior. And I was like, yeah, like people are still listening to the show at the end. But what really started to dawn on me is when I went to the ad space, when I went to Red Circle and I was looking at that number that dropped and it mm-hmm. dipped and i was like oh fuck no like that money that came in every year like that's taxable money that i can go and apply mm-hmm. uh the microphones keyboard all this stuff like it matters to me i've bought like two cameras just for youtube alone so microphones and stuff i've had to update that i've had to go and buy so many things that are taxable because at the end of the day this is my business as well right so I was like, I have to treat this as a business. I can't go and take a month or two off to just like figure things out. I can't. Take- I mean, you can. No, 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 no. Not for me. The reason oh, why I say okay. not for me is because like, even if you take a break from podcasting, you still have content that you have to make right outside of that. Like you could spend that time learning your craft and figuring like the business side of that stuff out, promoting mm-hmm. yourself. Like when we took that break from Loudmouth for that month, mm-hmm. people were still going and listening to previous episodes because mm-hmm. we've had so many stacked up. Right. And you know, for a fact, I still have shows from 2020 <laughs> that I have not. Break. I'm I'm going to release these. I swear I'm going to release oh them. Oh my God. Dude actually messaged me and he was like, Greg, I'm going to, he was like, did you ever post that show? I was like, oh God, I forgot what the dude's name was. But he had message on stereo and I never checked the message. 
I had never checked the message because you know how sometimes you get those DMs and it's just like whatever. Yeah. I go and I check it and I was like, yeah, he's still on here. And he came in and listened to the sports desk one day. And then he had messaged he's like, hey, like, what happened to that episode we did a couple of years ago? I was like, fuck, let me a go. A couple of years a ago. A couple of years ago, right? So I got to go and put that content out because this is stuff that needs to come out. Same thing with the YouTube channel. Like now that we have this, I'm like, okay, I have content that, you know, I can put on YouTube. But mm-hmm. also like with the tech stuff, it kind of slowed up because honestly, there was no tech towards the end of the year. Right now, the CES and stuff, I'm like, cool, I can go and focus on that. Um, And I'll touch on that just because I'm sure we'll post this on both of our channels. For anybody who's like thinking about like me and like the tech side of stuff, like there's not a lot of tech that's going on right now. So Mm -hmm. I'm not going to force putting out a whole bunch of content. There's a lot of YouTube creators in the tech space that feel like they have to do a video a week or a video every couple of weeks. That's not how tech works. You can literally put out five videos once, you know, like flow the entire week and then be gone for two or three weeks will your metrics be the same absolutely and the reason why is because people are engaging with what they want to see so if you got a new iphone right like cool you got a new iphone make your video like the unboxing then you have the impression video and then you have the 30 or 60 day later video you're not going to post a every week hey this is my iphone this is what it looks like today now there are some people who do that but they have their certain niche they're looking for like installation updates, like iOS updates and stuff like that. But for me, I'm like, I don't want to force YouTube on people. I just want to give good content without like oversaturating it. So Mm. I get that. I think um, definitely understanding what's what you need as far as your time, um, scheduling it out. And even now with, Maybe I'm not dropping multiple Cozy Room shows. Maybe I'm not dropping multiple She Gets It shows. But I am using each day to do something else content-wise to push. And it is already paying off. And I think I'm like in my second week of doing it where people are ready for, okay, what is she going to post today? Yes, I know she's going to post three of these Mm -hmm. or at least four of these or I'm going to be able to see this and that. And I think a lot of times that's what holds a lot of people back where they show up in this one area of media. Yeah. And they think, okay, yeah, I'm on my social media. You're on one platform one way, but there's multiple ways to show up. You can do YouTube videos Mm -hmm. and i'm not saying you have to do a youtube video every day but you can do a weekly youtube video you could do a monthly Mm -hmm. um you can be on tiktok you can be on other people's lives you can um post pictures if people know like okay this is from this time this is from this time and the way you engage in that video a lot of times people will be like I do post to my social media, check out my page. And you go Mm -hmm. to like, let's say their Instagram page, picture of an episode, picture of an episode, picture of an episode, but every picture is the same. It's not like you made a new cover for this particular episode. It looks the same as the one from last week. Exactly. So why would I want to come to your page and engage? But if you go to someone's page and they say that they're a podcaster and it's not all selfies because right I hate that. Listen. Why would you have an Instagram page and let it be all selfies? Why would you have a TikTok page and say that, you know, you have your own business and you sell pillows yep. and all I see is your face. I don't, I ain't see man pillow. None. On here. So fucking one. I think how people show up and claim who they are. I need to be able to go on your page and not see a bio and know who you are. Bingo. I need to be able to scroll down and be like, okay, that seems like they have a shop. It seems like they have a website. It seems like they do episodes. I wonder what their episodes sound like. Okay, here's an interactive clip. Yeah, exactly. Okay, I can visually see it. I can hear it. And I can get an idea of what they're talking about. Then yep. here's them having a point of view on this. And they're maybe sitting down somewhere. Maybe they're at a park. Maybe they're at the gym. Hmm. They must be into fitness. Like I should get an idea of what your brand is that you're pushing through your media. 
through your website. I shouldn't be having to figure out what your email is. Mm -hmm. And so if you're, if you're claiming to be a content creator or an actress or an actor, or you do voiceovers, but people can't get in contact with you, yeah. like even a company that hit us up, mm -hmm. I still do not know how they got my email. Yep. But I'm cool with that because them ha getting my email tells me, oh, I put what needs to be where it needs to be for them to get what they need to get. Exactly. And I think that's what people have to do no matter what you're doing out here is be able to be approached in the way companies want to approach you so exactly. you can get the opportunities. I think a lot of people miss opportunities by having a business, but the page is private. Yep. Having a website, but it's, it's soon, soon coming exactly. or, uh, Having a voicemail, this voicemail is not set up yet. <laughs> like mm -hmm. you're missing spaces for people to leave that. I need you for this. I'm here. Please call me back. And I just so much um, opportunities. So many opportunities. That's my Jamaican shit. Much of many mm -hmm. um, are missed by people just not prepping. No. Yeah. And so I think um, when it comes to content, of course, Greg and I could have just stayed on stereo until the end of time mm -hmm. until, you know, loud mouth stereo is just like, you know what, Greg, I think I'm done with this. And Greg would be like, you know what, me too. And we move on maybe, but since we want to grow with loud mouth stereo and we see that stereo is changing, not in the direction that makes sense for us. Mm -hmm. We have to look at it like this. Okay, what is stereo getting out of us coming to that app mm -hmm. every month? Yep. What can we get out of stereo by coming yep. to that app every month? Exactly. We can give them half of our time, there half of our attention, and mm -hmm. we can use the other half of our energy and mm -hmm. put it somewhere else that's been more beneficial for us. And that's what you have to do. Sometimes you got an opportunity with a company and it was great until it wasn't and it doesn't mean you don't like that company it just means you have to shift just like they're taking a shift mm -hmm. and when they take in the shift they don't ask you permission hey are you going to be okay if we make this change no we have no shares in this company exactly you're, you're not going to ask us shit Fact. but at the same time greg and i have to look at it like this okay where do we want to push our attention where do we want people to come find us and what do we want them to look at and a lot of times the best way you show up for a lot of brands is not being one way. And when mm -hmm. I say not being one way is like, oh, they're a podcaster. They only podcast and it's only audio. There's no visuals. They don't do anything. They don't have any views. They don't have an audience. Nah, I don't think they'll be good to sell this. No, yeah. I don't think they'll be good to promote this. So if we try it, we show up a certain way. We look at the numbers, we get the feedback, we see what people want, we engage with our audience, we give our audience a space to show up in different than being out the blue and mm -hmm. in front of strangers. Because a lot of times, I think people have a lot to share. Mm -hmm. Sometimes people don't want to share in the public. Bingo. Sometimes people want to share something in a group where they feel like they trust the minds that's in the room. And I feel like we can use this Zoom the subscribers only to trust the minds of who's going to come in the zoom in the room and maybe talk about things that can don't have to be filtered out mm -hmm. because a lot of these platforms are filtering what you can talk about. They're having an issue at what word was said. And I think in order to have a perspective from different people, we have to be open to, well, maybe this person was never around someone that talked yeah talked spoke in a in a different way and still got that point across yep. maybe greg could expose them to a different way of getting their po point across that they didn't know you know yep. and it's just like giving people a space and a chance to go ahead and do that so my thing with the subscribers edition is it's not that we're giving you less we want to give you more but we want to figure out a way on how you would like that more to be given Facts. 
Yeah, it, it, it takes you, you know, not having the audience, but having people in the room. Like yeah. people need to know the difference between having an audience and having like, you know, a core group. It starts with a core group in order to engage with everybody else. Just like you mm-hmm. have your friend group that might invite you to an event and then you meet some of their other friends and then you mm-hmm. connect with them. Like we have our circles that are, or our bubbles and then we meet another bubble and then you join that bubble. And it's like, oh, great. Like now you right. network that way. So for us, you know, I'm piggybacking on everything you said. For me, in my personal opinion, like the price of the brick went up. Like y'all have gotten <laughs> content for three years, like straight on out. Like we got y'all through mask wearing, staying in the house, <laughs> having nothing to do. We, we've we lasted longer than Clubhouse. Twitter damn near on its last legs because of it. Listen. Um, they, They've created Mastodon, which I've set up, but I'm not going to use because it's like I'm, I'm just going to have it. So I have my name. Mm-hmm. Um, But. The, the name of the game here is meeting people where they are. So we're here for y'all. And it's not saying like we're completely stripping away content, but it's definitely one of those things where it's like we have to have time for ourselves, especially mm-hmm. when we're adding value and hoping that other people can add value to us. So we're not saying pay our bills, but I mean, help us continue to make the content. Who knows? Yeah. Like buy a new microphone, buy you know, a new computer, like my computer had completely like shit to bed. And it was like, oh, great. Like I got to spend $2,000 on, a, you know, on a new computer. Yay! Yeah. Was not happy about that. And then two weeks later, guess what? After I spent the $2,000, I get a job that's like, hey, we're gonna give you a free MacBook. Too late to take the other MacBook back. So now I'm stuck with two MacBooks. And somebody's mm-hmm. gonna be like, Greg, why don't you sell them, you know, the MacBook and buy new equipment? That's not how Apple works. Mm-hmm. Unless you're gonna send it to like eBay or something, but even then you're gonna get half the value. It's worth keeping the other MacBook and having somebody else use it. But either way, what I'm I guess attempting to convey here is when it comes to loud mouth stereo, the reason why I care about it so much is because there's so much value that I've personally gotten from the people who leave messages. Yeah. And the people who share their stories with us that I would hope that they would continue to do that. Now, we're not saying give us, you know. 20 30 40 dollars a month or something like that but it's like mm-hmm. hey like you know show that you're here now i mm-hmm. feel like the first episode or two we can invite people in and be like hey like come in and see how it is and then mm-hmm. after that's like all right cool if if you're messing with the content as much as you say you are help, help us out on the back end because yeah. that creates more content so it's not a 30 45 minute show who knows we might start having two hour shows where people come on and start telling their stories hello listen because i feel like I mean, in the last, what, two years, what haven't we talked about? Exactly. You know? And at this point, it's kind of like, we don't want to put, like, this time frame on, okay, you only have 60 seconds to speak. Tell us everything. Exactly. And then shut up. And I think when you listen to podcasts, I like when they have, like, listener letters. I like when they have emails. I like when they go through different things i like this shit outside of like celebrity stuff Mm -hmm. um shout out to all the women this week talking about how they like being porter bodies like cool but i don't necessarily want to regurgitate the same thing i already heard you know so shout out to the people that want to hear something different want to talk about something different um We've met a lot of great people through just being on stereo uh, and we'll have them on here. We'll have Jay from mm-hmm. relation, the real relationship report. We'll have E Ruth come on here. Kev, like we have more options than waiting for a platform to give us something. Mm-hmm. And I think for you and myself, we really utilize, okay, what's new? What's this? How can I use it? Do I want to use it? Is it for me? And I think our filter system for growth is really good. And I think that's what has got us so far here. And I want to be able to be in a position where I don't need that nine to five Mm -hmm. non-creative job to take my time and then Hey, Sean Saul, you're allowed nine o'clock to 12 a.m. to create like Mm -hmm. I want balance and the balance will come with the opportunity. The balance will come with the sponsorships that make sense to give me more time to create 
over being at a job that's taking over my day doing something I don't want to do anyway. Mm -hmm. And so I think that for me is my goal this year is more sponsorships so I can own more of my time and not throw it away. Because the reality is we are all throwing away our time in something if it's not what we want to do. If it's not something that fulfills us, we're throwing our time away. If it's not a person that's fulfilling you in more ways than one, like a stuffed donut. (laughs) Why am I here? Why am I here? Okay. I want to be fulfilled. Okay. I want to be stuffed. Okay. And I'm not talking a duck. Oh God. Uh All right. And so (laughs) creatively, I want to do that. Now, my stereo, we're not limited. I have, you know, front to back, you know, thoughts of like what I would want to do for episodes. But at the same time, I don't want to keep throwing my thoughts away because I feel like just like we're losing a lot of podcasters, new ones are coming. Mm -hmm. New ones are being like, you know, I have everything. I'm going to start a podcast who have never mentioned a podcast ever in their life Mm -hmm. that they wanted to do. And a lot of times I think people just see people talk, see people show up week after week and just like, okay, I can do that. Mm -hmm. But what really sets people apart is, are you getting better every time you're showing up? Are you getting more consistent? Um, Is your audience growing? Are you getting more comfortable Do you know when to pause? Do you know when to let the other person speak? Do you know when your audience is tired of hearing you talk about X, Y, and Z? Do you know when you're stuck in like this repetitive, okay, we're tired of hearing that. What's new moment? Mm -hmm. Because I think just like any relationship with someone else, you have to be able to self-check yourself a lot when you're in podcasting and be like, Mm -hmm. okay. I've talked enough about this. I'm not seeing the feedback on this going up any higher. I think people are done with this, so I need to move on. What can I move on to? What is my purpose of this podcast anyway? And I think that's what really gets a lot of people fucked up in podcasting Mm -hmm. is they come in this thinking, I'm just going to talk about whatever and I'm going to want to all the time. And the, the reality is you're not. No. If you haven't grown from your first five episodes at, ep- you know, at episode 50 or whatever, like if you can look back and be like, oh, we've been doing the same shit, it's time to evolve. Yeah. That's why when people ask me, why do we not have Dope and Nope anymore? I would love to do Dope and Nope, but I also know that's an extra 30 minutes we could be using sleeping, creating more <laughs> content or like, honestly, like if you don't know the new music, like now I couldn't even tell you the new music. It's like, yeah. then that might not be for you. And I didn't want to keep forcing it completely did away with it. It was like some segments are able to be retired. Who knows? We might bring it back if somebody's like, hey, just do an episode, make an episode on it. Right. Mm-hmm. Um, also with the news and stuff that had to kind of like fall at the wayside. Like I won't like give like too many clues on what we have planned, mm-hmm. but there's a lot of changes that I've made because we're all grown now. Like I'm saying grown, meaning like as podcasters, year one, year two, you're figuring shit out. Year three, you're going to be like, all right, cool. Like, it's worked. How can I monetize? Year four is like, hey, we got a sponsor, monetize. Um, How can I get X amount of listeners? By year five, it should be like, all right, cool. How can I accomplish all this, you know, all of that, but relate it to other platforms? Podcasting can't just be your, your baby. Everybody that I've seen that just stuck to, hey, we got the jumping podcast, we got the popping podcast. The year they start popping and thinking they hot, they start flopping. I, I swear, it, 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 I'm not even gonna call names. But the moments, yeah, they be like, "Hey, man, I, you know our podcast is the popping one right now. We the wave, and everybody listening to us and stuff like that." It's like, all right, cool. And then people stop listening. You know why? They they tired of hearing the same shit. I, I can't throw a name out there that realized it was over. Bodega Boys, they knew it was over. Mm. They're like, "All right, there's that." Joe Button had to revamp what four times in the last year and a half because it's it's not like it once was, but he's trying to create things because it got stale. Mm-hmm. Um, 
like the reeds of the world and stuff like that. They've had to take breaks, which is cool to have breaks, but it's like when you come back, just make sure you have something else that showed that you've grown in your absence, right? Mm-hmm. So that's how I've treated every year of podcast and trying to evolve, trying to change things. And we had to cut, you know, some dead weight, which, you know, it's a good or bad thing depending on who's listening. But with at least podcast and how I feel about it, is there has to be some evolution. If it's not for you, it's for the listeners. The listeners should be able to be like, I grew from that. I learned from that. And we've heard plenty of times from our listeners like, oh, information I didn't know. You know, how can I start a podcast? Like we've spoken that enough to them and other things that we've said, but it's like, okay, now like pour into us. And that's where I want. That's that's how I want this content to go. In 2023, it's like pour into each other instead of us kind of like spoon feeding you the the meal. Like let's share that spoon. Let's share that plate. So well, I feel like the next <laughs> the next um, big headline and conversation piece that's coming is going to be this Tyree Nichols video because oh, they they are about they're about to release the video that they've been hiding with the five officers that beat him to death. Oh, wow. um, and <laughs> the the sheriff is just like please let it be a peaceful riot no off top and i'm just (laughs) like where have you ever seen a peaceful riot like no peaceful riots if you have to say that before the video is dropped you know it's disgusting yeah it's bad and um shit like that and i saw a video on tiktok where this lady was like we're at 39 um shootings for the year and we haven't even made it out of january i'm just like dog what the mm-hmm. fuck is going on yeah earth needs a reboot what is going on earth needs a reboot people we we used to have the complaint of oh you know what it's us it's the you know like we've been stuck in a house too long it's like no like it's not about being stuck in a house it's not that at all People are finally showing you exactly who the fuck they were. People have access to like just readily just do whatever the fuck they want to now. Mm -hmm. Um, I'm not going to get into the political side of it. What I will say is people are more vocal about shit that they should honestly shut up and get more informed about. Mm. Like I, I personally blame Twitter for a lot of that because a lot of people just impulsively say the first thing that comes to their mind. And it always bites them in the ass. Yeah. Or do, or do the the shit for clout. Exactly. And then wonder why somebody stomped them in aisle three. Exactly. Because I came in here to get shit at Walmart real quick and go home. And mm-hmm. you ain't here trying to do a TikTok video and prank me. And exactly. I'm about to beat your ass. No. Like that again. And somebody going to hate me for saying this. Um, I personally blame Clubhouse for the first well i'm sorry the end of 2020 and all of 2021 because people have taken casual conversations and made them content so people (sighs) are believing that everything is supposed to be content and it's not like you don't have a podcast you don't have a platform you don't have like friends that would carry from one platform to the other there are a lot of names that i could call and i won't i'll just say they're very popping still on clubhouse they went from having you know one two thousand people you know person rooms to 500 now they might have like 89 to 150 and they're holding on to them for dear life and the reason why is they can't pull that shit from clubhouse anywhere else because don't nobody want to hear that bullshit that's why and that's why clubhouse gives you the illusion that you're important Exactly. There are a lot of people, <clears throat> which I hate, but you you had said this, and I have to give you your credit. There are a lot of podcasts that started and ended because of Clubhouse. There, there are a lot of people who thought that, hey, I'm a podcaster. Let me go ahead and, you know, go on Clubhouse, build my brand. And they went from being a podcaster to a common, you know, a commentator on Clubhouse with nothing to show for. Yeah. And I'm not just saying, I'm not saying that to just, you know, demean anybody, but it's like, where's the value in this where's the context in it i've had friends that i've listened to when i say friends meaning like podcasters and stuff like that Mm -hmm. started down the past you know the route of being a podcaster now they're 
giving like you know content about whack 100 on youtube and it's like oh okay I, I see what you're doing here but it's like that's not you like you were doing so much better there like one of the podcasts i listened to he stopped doing his show and now he do like movie reviews and stuff but it's something that makes him happy he's like you know the podcasting thing he had done it for like seven to eight years he was like going to retire from that for a while just had a kid he was like i want to do something else and i was like that's cool but you're so good at that don't end it and then try to come back in like three or four years and the entire podcast scope has changed yeah it is and i know somebody's like oh you gotta have a break sometimes like not that much of a break like keep doing what you're doing that you feel like you're successful at because the moment you stop you want to be mad i kick myself every day i used to know how to code do html all that shit on yeah. Black Planet, MySpace. And if I would have kept doing that, I would probably be making $130,000 a year. Because people who code these websites and do all that stuff, that's how much they make. Doing because it. it has evolved. Exactly. Okay. When when Adobe realized yeah. the jug that is, you can digitally subscribe to this instead of buying the actual CD. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. one time man i don't want that shit no more because i know i'm gonna have to turn around and buy this again and buy exactly. it again and buy mm -hmm. it again it's like blockbuster went from actual factual in real life to digital everything everything is subscription yep. um speaking of that i don't understand instagram subscription why am i subscribing to see what you post i okay I, I saw an article about this and I, i'm just like you i'm kind of concerned about it and the reason why that gives me like low-key stalker vibes if yeah. i love your life so much yeah i'm just like let me check my feed that i'm paying for what yeah i, I just think it's the thing where it's like people want to feel like and I'm sure somebody would say the same for us. It's like, okay, we have value, we add value. So let's just, you know, make a paid tier or something like that. And it's like, that's absolutely not the case. There yeah. are people who are influencers with nothing that they're influencing. They just might walk around in a thong and have 250,000 followers. Mm -hmm. You can pay them $6 a month to do the exact same thing that they've been doing. I don't get it. I, I just, I can't justify it, but you know what? There's an audience for everything now, and I'm completely oh. fine with that. The issue is, I feel like Instagram doesn't know where they want to be. They mm. don't know if they want to be for photos. They don't want to be for videos. The CEO came out this week and was like, oh, I don't, you know, I think we have oversaturated the market with, you know, with videos trying to be TikTok. But everybody's trying to be TikTok because when TikTok was telling y'all, like, yo, like, we the wave and you know we caught it back in youtube shorts yeah bro Th they want that audience they lost because things evolve things change yeah um i found out you know because of the gig that apparently pinterest is trying to make a comeback and you know why it pinterest used to be the place where you had an idea you search for the idea you save the idea on there it was a mood board for people who didn't want to make a visual mood board yeah and now they're trying to get into video content. They don't want to do photo. They want to do like TikTok, but they want to do TikTok for the people who don't want to go viral for everything. And they just want it to be like the social TikTok, kind of like, I'm trying to think of like the term for, okay. So Pinterest is trying to be Facebook compared to Twitter. They're like, okay, this is where the, the upper class hang out at Pinterest. <laughs> Meanwhile, like y'all can go to TikTok for that bullshit, but we're we going to be over here being extra classy about it, right? Uh, when I looked at the numbers, it was like the metrics of the highest use uh, of Pinterest was like 40 to 65. And I'm like, yo, I'm not 40 yet. So there's that. What and, are you on there cooking croutons? Yeah. People are running from Twitter. Like people are running from Twitter because they, they don't know what's going to happen with oh. Twitter, right? So like, okay, we have to find a destination. And everybody's so scared of TikTok not realizing, yo, wait until they release a feature when I think they're purposely waiting for like Eon. I'm not saying his whole name because I don't want him being able to search it through the algorithms. But <laughs> when, e, 
when Eon decides that, you know, he's going to finally let Twitter like go, everybody's going to flood TikTok. And the reason why people have Instagram and they don't want to use it anymore because they don't know what that is. And they're like, oh, I can get more traction from TikTok. I'm going to go over there. Mm. Now, there's the Macedons of the world. I told you, I even hate the name of that app. So that Macedon, it sounds like a transformer. It, it It's a dinosaur. Why would you name an app for something that's ancient as if it's not going to go ancient itself, right? Macedon. Yeah. So it's a free platform. But the way I explained it to one of my friends was Macedon is the equivalent of AOL chat rooms and Reddit. Yeah, I'll, I'll explain. So AOL chat rooms have, you know, when we used to be able to use AOL chat rooms or AIM or whatever, you could go into different rooms and you can be whoever you were in those particular rooms. You can rename your name. You can go and be a different person in one room. With Reddit, you have one username and you can float into different groups. Mastodon try to mash itself together with the both of those. So like Reddit, you have all of these like subreddits. You know, you have these sub Mastodon, uh, Mastodon groups. But you have like these email usernames because like my username is like Greg at Mastodon dot social. Right. But I can only access certain group members with that username in order to go into a different group, like a sports group or something. I would have to put like Greg at NFL dot social or too much work. Yeah, it's too much. And the thing is, nobody wants to do more work for social media. We should be able to get instant gratification. We should be able to get views and get traffic. What's pissing people off now and why people are gravitating to TikTok is because all the people who got mad about fleets, all the people who really don't like to tweet. I miss fleets. Oh, if Eon decides that he's going to bring back fleets, Twitter's going to start popping again. And I think he's waiting. That's going to be his last ditch effort. He's going to be like, you know what? We're going to bring fleets back. Everybody who's using Instagram stories is going right back to Twitter. And what they're doing now with Twitter is a little bit of a cesspool because they have a whole bunch of these Twitter bots that I've never seen them tweet before. And it happens like every four to five months. People they all just, in my DMs. Yeah. They just randomly come around and they're DMing you, they're spamming you, but they also got these timelines that all their tweets are trending. Like every tweet they have that is recent is like 50K retweets you know, a hundred thousand likes, a million impressions. It's like Twitter don't work. There's not even a million people in my personal opinion that is looking at black Twitter. And somebody's gonna be like, yo, Greg, you're wrong. I'm like, no, black Twitter is such a big like eco chamber, like or echo chamber that nobody's gonna go and look specifically at one person's tweet that you know for a fact that they're not following. So either they're bots or they're white people who are just saying black shit with large white audiences and now they're infiltrating black Twitter by using a fake avatar or something like that. Or now, they like them NFT people, them Forex people. Exactly. Uh, like it's so annoying. Yeah. Well, I- I'll say this and I'll shut up about it. You remember last month, the wave was that app that you can scan like any photos in your phone and like ai would make you like anything it can make you like a forest ranger or some shit like that right like i forgot what the name of the app was like aviator or aviate whatever it was was you that can, the one where a whole bunch of people were buying yes you could pay ten dollars a month and they would oh give you God. like 40 photos of you in like different scenarios but it was all like ai engineer some were like painted some were hand drawn it's like how the fuck can you possibly do that that fast I shouldn't be able to get 40 variants of one photo in seven minutes. It shouldn't work that way. But tying it into the whole Twitter bot thing, that's what's happening now. Like people have these Twitter bots, they have these AI like bots as well. But for me, I'll say this and I'll only say this once again for 2023. If you are not on every platform just signed up for, you already doomed for failure. So that's rule number mm-hmm. one. Rule number two, um, y'all need to get familiar with TikTok. It's really that simple. What I think is happening is they're going to announce a feature to communicate with without video, without photo, just like Twitter, where you could just make statuses, just on, like Twitter. On TikTok. Once that happens, that's it. Yeah. Nobody needs nobody needs Instagram. Nobody needs Twitter anymore. They're just waiting to see if Elon is going to finally sell that company. Well, I say I'm sorry, Eon. I said his name. We can bleep that out later, but. With Eon, his issue is 
he's already late on payments for the house and not the house that he has in you know, like Silicon Valley or whatever, multi-billionaire in debt to the point where they're trying to close the Twitter offices because they haven't paid rent in months, right? Yeah, they have not paid rent on Twitter offices and spaces for months. So you know what's going to happen? They're going to go into foreclosure. He's going to sell off all of the offices or they're going to go into bankruptcy. And as a result, Twitter's going to go into the ground. People are going to scatter like roaches and try to figure out where to go to next. Wow, you only, you only, honestly, at that point, you only have two options. You either go to Facebook or you go to TikTok. And when I say Facebook, like most people have Facebook already. Facebook is like the digital phone number. They're like, all right, cool. I have Facebook, but I don't use it. Like, I have Facebook, but it's for grandma, aunties, cousins. For grandma. Yeah, that, that, that's it. And, and like family members, I don't want to have my phone number. Instagram is like my time capsule. So I have that. TikTok is going to be what Twitter was, where you can post. You used to be able to on, was it TwitVid? Post videos, kind of like you did that. I Vine. That. Honestly, like the, Vine. yeah, you had Vines. Imagine if we had Twitter today and you had Twitter, you had the Vine feature, you had um, Fleets, you had um the dm the group dms and stuff everybody's that, battery in their phone would be like dead in like dead 10 minutes. dead but you know, again this is my little social media like manager side coming out i'm not gonna talk too long about it just make sure you are visible on these platforms especially if you want to create content start to create time you know content or manage content because if you're on there you, you've made yourself money yeah you you've sent you know essentially made yourself money yeah. Um I don't I don't know like I think this is going to be really good come spring summer um when people are like out and about mm-hmm. and they know like oh it's the subscribers only show. Um it's something for us to promote on the regular episodes on stereo. Uh we have more options of what we put here mm-hmm. and for those who don't subscribe on Red Circle which is our host for the podcast. If you don't do it there, we're going to get your views on YouTube. So it's like a win-win. We can make our own clips. Greg's clips doesn't have to be my clips. My clips don't have to be Greg clips. We can use a clip on TikTok. We can use a clip on Twitter. We can use a clip on IG. And we're killing multiple birds with one stone. PETA, don't come get me but it's just a reference oh, and I, I i just want people to understand that it's not a lot of work if you don't make it a lot of work but if you work once and you can use it five different places five different times that is the goal of what you want to do nobody has to know that this is greg's fifth hoodie today and he's Damn done right. five shows you know what i'm saying nobody needs to know that Nobody will know that as long as the topic changes, um, your energy changes, and how you deliver changes. And then Greg could go about his month like nothing happened. And people are looking at him like, he does this every week. He'd be here every week. No, he don't. He'd be living his life. Mm-hmm. And I feel like that's the misconception that people will be having like, oh, you do this every week. Oh, where do you find the time? That's like one of the main questions people ask me, where do you find the time? I do my best with the time when I have it. Like there are times like I literally block out two hours to do clothes changes, be in different parts of my house, doing different clips, editing it, making sure it's on IG, making sure some of it is on YouTube, making sure some of it is on TikTok. And I just engage for the rest of the day differently right yep. and if you're not moving like that you're going to get bored you're going to feel stuck you're going to feel like your method is not working you're going to wonder where are the people at why am I not getting traction because the way that you're coming off is not authentic the way that you're coming off you're coming off like a scheduled program you know, when you see the videos come up on TikTok and they're, they're talking, oh my gosh, this perfume is so good. It smells just like da-da-da-da. No, it doesn't. And we see the bottom Hello. left hand that says sponsored. And you're like the 13th person today trying to push this perfume. 
I understand that companies want to get as many content creators as giving them the numbers that they want. But at the same time, if people see so many people pushing the same thing, talking about the same thing, they're going to catch on that you're just fishing and you're just trying to get the most people to buy into what this person is selling. And my thing is like, you don't see Bentley making sure everybody mentions Bentley every time they talk about a car, but people know where to go get a Bentley if they want a Bentley. Exactly. You know, McLaren doesn't have a, a, a commercial for a reason. Lamborghini doesn't have a commercial for the, for a reason. If you're as great as you are and you did your marketing correctly. And when people see how you present yourself, they'll come find you. Facts. Because people be finding Greg every day. People be finding me every day. And it's up to you to set your price. It's up to you to delegate your time. It's up to you to decide Would this be good for my brand or would this not be good for my brand? Should I be out here pushing edibles while I'm trying to get these school contracts or should I not? Like, that's up to you. I don't know what's on your plate, but I know there's certain things that I'm not trying to talk about on Cozy Womb. I know there's certain things I'm not trying to talk about on the book club podcast. I know there's certain things I'm not trying to talk about on the real relationship report or La Mal stereo or she gets it but understanding your purpose that's going to be what pushes you regardless of who listens regardless of if the numbers have increased or not regardless of if um you're just not feeling it today Thanks. you know I wanted to do this zoom and this episode at eight I strolled up in here 8 20. But I let Greg know, like, it's life, but I still showed up. I didn't say, okay, let's cancel it. Because I'm aware that just because this is my situation, this is not Greg's situation. And I think a lot of times when you have a group podcast, you got to be considerate. Yeah. You know? Or you can be like me, just like, fuck them. (laughs) I mean, eventually (laughs) that's what it's going to turn into, but it it shouldn't be hard. If you love it, yeah. it shouldn't be an argument. If you love it, it shouldn't be, uh, come on, come on, come on. Let's, let's do this. Let's post this. Let's force this. Let me show this because they're giving me this money. Money is cool, but money going to come and go. Mm-hmm. But Real quick tip. Yeah. Real quick tip. One line. Get you a calendar. Shan told me this shit two years ago. <laughs> Just start scheduling stuff. The shit yeah. makes stuff so much easier. If I showed you my calendar, it's not like there's a whole bunch of stuff going on. Just a ca- maybe get a calendar with a task man- uh, manager in it. Like, what is it like Google Calendar? They have like Google Tasks and stuff like that. Yeah. Do that. You can add your task one way. You can have your calendars another way. I use this app called Fantastical. It has like everything I have structured. It has like my scheduled meetings at work. It also yeah. has the other stuff that I do. It added so much value to my life being able to do that i feel more organized now so when you know full transparency when scanning um i said scan jesus christ when (laughs) when shan and i first met she was doing it by hand she would have like every episode and still sometimes and i was like not only is she organized she's structured and you know it's hard to find people who are both you might find people who have organization but to everybody else it looks like it's unstructured it has no structure at all she had both she still has both because it just it's all cohesive Mm -hmm. and i didn't understand that until i got hired here was like you know what this is going like this job has helped me appreciate podcasting but it's also made me appreciate that she was doing it first like you know she gets it like Mm -hmm. shan was doing this for so long and it's like oh i'm seeing what she's doing but now it's like it's made me look back at all the mistakes i've made so i would just hope that people like leading in when they're listening like when they're learning about podcasting when they're listening to us they're like okay they see the structure they see the cohesion more importantly they're looking at it like they care about it and i think a calendar or a task manager or just honestly just writing things down Mm -hmm. putting in your phone like your apple notes makes you care about it because you have to go back and like reference that and say you know what i did this for a reason right. when i look at the old like loud mouth like dockets and stuff i'm like 
that makes sense. Like I looked at one <laughs> specifically, it was like a four hour episode we had done. This was, God, this was like March of 2022. Yeah. We had done like a four hour episode and we were going back and forth. Um, Like Eru from Kev, they were on it, like leaving voicemails. And then there was like another person leaving voicemails and we got so far away from the docket. We just threw the docket away. <laughs> and <laughs> it was like, yo, we don't, we don't need the docket anymore because the the people have like enriched the content. Yeah. And having a like having a calendar and being able to structure certain things when you have that flow, it's just like, all right, cool. You got that flow. You have like all that information there. Sometimes you might not need it, but it's good to reference it when you look back and like, dang, we didn't even finish talking about that a year right. ago. Like now you can look at him like, hey, like Wait, let's do the I, episode. Like, Greg be in the episode. He's just like, let's put a pin in this and we'll continue yeah. next time. That next time never happens a lot of times because by that Friday, we done came up with a new topic. Yep. So I I would have to go back and be like, hmm, was this supposed to be a part two? Was this supposed to be a part two? Because a lot of them was supposed to be a part two. Mm -hmm. But a lot of times on stereo, we don't want to lose the momentum of those voicemails yeah. because they're timed. The point is made at a certain time. And if you go back, too late it doesn't make any sense and you're just like what are they talking about and you're lost yep. and so even keeping up that tempo of okay you speak i speak let's play this let's play this that was work and remember they used to end people's shows that they didn't get the voicemails yep. a lot of times it was pressure but that was like a good challenge and i think mm. things like that is what really made that app great which really irritates me because i'm just like why did they stop it was like a it was like a game yep of engagement that made sense i had to write that one down game of engagement yeah oh it was so good it just made people want to speak and made people want to be involved in the conversation yes. and made people want to show up because oh there's 30 people in here and they all got something to say and there's a topic and these people like it's just I felt like it made you feel like you went out on on a Saturday night and really hung out with some good people and you yeah, went exactly. the fuck home but the reality is you could be in your draws in your room and having this mm -hmm. fulfillment and I I think that's the phoniness all these platforms are trying to create exactly but there's a um ingredient you have to have in order to create that and if stereo would have stuck with it they could have had it exactly but you know what that just leaves room for us and people who are listening subscribers who are listen when they come into here they don't mm -hmm. have to worry about that 60 seconds they can get your shit off because yes. you, you doing that means you said it we've had time to actually like you know compartmentalize it and like you know register it and then respond back versus the many shows where we ended up having to, hey, we're going to do a part two. We're going to come back next week because we got 28 voicemails and we can't play them all. Mm -hmm. This happened more times than I can count. Yeah. And so I, maybe I'll look into like Zoom games. Yes. Or here. Um, engagement, uh, engagement games. Mm -hmm. um, just so people can feel like they have the space to speak. Um, because... That shit. We used to do long ass shows, Greg. Mm -hmm. I was just like, man, I was just like, how am I going to edit this? We got to yeah. stop and then come back in the app. It was crazy. Yeah. Do, do you remember the night? And I, I know we, we run along, but do you remember the night we started the show at like nine and we ended at like four o'clock in the morning? It yes. was like we, we, we ran so long. And then like, I think for some <laughs> reason the app messed up. So we we were like, and we need to cut this show part one yeah. short and we'll come right back. We'll do another show. And then, cause we had too many voicemails and it wouldn't let us continue playing voicemails. Yeah. So we ended that and then started a whole nother one that night. And that was at like 1230 and people came back and were still trying to carry the conversation. And it's like, like we, we need that. Like that made me happy. And I get it. People outside now, it's not the, the quarantine period anymore. I was like, no, like, there's a day of the week that y'all asses are staying in the house mm -hmm. and why not spend the time 
hanging out with us because you already fuck with us to begin with. And we can have that same great content, but now there's a face instead of an avatar. Yeah. Something just came across my mind. So I had a pair today. You saw the pair I dropped in the uh, text? Yep. It looked like the pair was covered in cardboard and the green, the real green was under it. And I'm just like, did they paint my goddamn fruit? <laughs> yeah. I was like, is she eating a fake fruit? Like, I don't know. But I, 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 pears came across my brain because mm-hmm. I'm just like, dog, nobody was lying about pears being a natural digestive cleanser. Mm-hmm. That shit is no joke. Yeah. yeah. Um. So, listen, I'm over here whistling. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> I was like, yeah, hey, we're going to get this out somehow. <laughs> I'm just like, why am I whistling right now? <laughs> so, I'm just like, pears, pears. That's the tweet. Mm-hmm. Pears, man. Eat your pears. You sound like Rick Ross. We got to put the sound by the Rick Ross. Pears. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my god, but yeah, I'm excited about um these shows and it just makes you relax because like what if life does happen and we're just mm-hmm. like we can't do the zoom today, let's do it tomorrow. There's no pressure. Exactly. And you know, for me, automatically we have the video and the audio, and yep. like it's a done deal, and we don't have to sit on an app and wonder why it's sounding weird and all of that shit so Mm -hmm. i'm excited about this um what we're not going to do is allow each other to leave the subscribers only and not push the other spaces that we're in so please let these people know about your youtube your website and what you have coming up yes so to, to start all information in case you forget, it's heygreg.io. So that is the website. It is not a you know coming soon or you know in progress. It is the site. You can contact me from there. You can add to the subscription letter. Um, I haven't sent a, a subscription letter out, but we will, depending on subscribers, obviously. Mm-hmm. Um, you can look at all of my social medias from there, except for Instagram, because I don't fuck with y'all that much. Um, <laughs> but Outside of that, you have the YouTube channel for Hey Greggy. Um, hopefully, like portions of this will be on that channel as well. Mm-hmm. So you have that, but you have the podcast Young Black and Bothered. We have the Sports Desk on Mondays. That usually is up by Wednesday. We have Young Black and Bothered now on Thursdays, which means I'm gonna have to get quick turnaround for that to get posted on Fridays. So there's that. We have my favorite show, um, Loud Mouth Stereo, of course. So you know we'll figure out a schedule into you know post us yeah. on our own because we already have content and i have a new show with ashley called black techies because now black that i'm actually techies. i'm officially in the tech space which means that i get the chance to talk nothing but tech with a friend who likes tech Love and it. everybody knows that's my jam so we have three shows i promise i'm not going to do like we did with the other co-hosts of shows and have 17 different shows and be recording like five days a week. It's just going to be Shan and I. It's going to be Ashley and I. It's going to be Young Black and Bothered. Every week, 2023, we're having an episode every week. Even if it's 30, 40 minutes, it's going to be that. I want to keep cohesion there. So that's just going to happen starting in February. February 6th, was the 16th or the 23rd? We're going to have a episode every week. And then YBAB Sports Desk, I'm believing we're going to try to take our first ever break because that's the longest running show in 2022. We've had a show every week, but two in 2022, which was Thanksgiving week and Christmas week. And then obviously, you know, any other ways you want to contact me, hey, Greg, I'm sorry, hey, Greggy at gmail.com. And you can find me on these Twitter streets at Al Sharp Tongue. Story behind that. Yeah. Um. <laughs> You can find me at shambypodden.com, shambypodden on Twitter, TikTok, IG, um, hashtag loudmouth stereo, M O U F stereo. Don't forget to check out the loudmouth stereo shop 
we the updated hoodies. the merch we got hoodies on there stickers on there i'm still waiting for my sticker to come through so i could put it somewhere sentimental not sure yet but um i have a bonus episode dropping um for friday morning uh it's just like a conversation i had in my car today um because that's I remember that's how I used to start cozy room when I first started it on my way to work, you know, single mom talking about going waking up early to go places you don't want to be, <laughs> and I was like, let me just get this off real quick. So um, I was having a conversation this morning, and then she gets it has a bonus episode dropping Saturday. I'm really trying not to do multiple episodes, but sometimes I just have like thoughts that are not like full episode worthy that I'm just like I'm just toss this in here real quick back out you know what I'm saying act like I wasn't here and um but Mondays uh cozy womb and uh she gets it pod will drop and then uh the real relationship reports twice a month February we got two good ones uh we have an episode on the 10th before Valentine's Day um Greg is definitely gonna welcome y'all to his goddamn cash app for his birthday okay don't be stingy or you could donate to uh, the podcast on Red Circle for Young Black and Bothered okay help that man out so he could get better get better options for you actually um, you know what I have a birthday wish if you don't mind what the birthday wish is for y'all to come to the next live that we do as subscribers Ooh. don't cash at me just join even if it's for a month subscribe because i think it's going to matter I, I think it's going to matter even if we have to bring in special guests to help celebrate the birthday i want y'all there so subscribe mm. for the month okay okay you see that okay um that's a good idea what else i got going on i ain't got nothing else going on y'all i am ready for my weekend i am trying to convince myself that there's no reason for me to get up early tomorrow because the girls are out of school. I'm going to tell you something. I feel like these new kids are getting away with murder the days off they be having compared to us when we were kids. Um, they get so many days off from school. It makes no sense. But um, yeah, that's it. That's all I got. Ain't got no more. This will be up tomorrow, early in the morning for y'all. And um, visually, probably midday because mm. <sighs> video life, life is life. Yeah, video is a process. Um, I'm getting better at it, but it is definitely a process. So, yeah. Any um, last words for loud mouth stereo? Get prepared to come to these subscriber shows. Listen, when I tell you the, the things you. The, the things that y'all think y'all have heard on loud mouth for free the filth yeah now I, I do have to preface this by just saying this really quickly um <laughs> since it's behind the paywall we still are going to protect your identity yes but we know who you are yes so bring your a game because we gonna have ours yes and we the valedictorians of having loud mouths so bring y'all loud asses on like subscribe subscribe yeah. subscribe subscribe and when you subscribe i'll do this when you subscribe you see our backgrounds i'll make you your own subscribers background you just tell me what name mm -hmm. you wanted to say and i got you you could be up here with us okay you could be a mouth on the stereo that is not the stereo but it's definitely the zoom room of the subscribers we gotta figure out a goddamn name for our people how about they give us one? What we'll yes, do is come up with a name that we're going to give y'all when y'all come in here and y'all subscribe. Yep. Okay, that is a task. Come up with a name for the people. I'm writing that down because I want to remember that. I'm writing it down too. Um, I think I'm going to do a subscriber's uh, promo for the merch mm -hmm. that I won't be telling the masses. Um, so I'll get that link out and I'll let you know what that is. Subscribers. So, you know, a lot of things to look forward to. 
options, okay. more options. That's what we want. Um, point I was going to make before I get out of here. I think people are really losing their shit because they're really seeing how much of a hole they're in. And a lot of people don't see a way out. Um, the homelessness that's happening in San Francisco where people have the audacity to rob you in broad daylight, break into your house and come back. Yep. Break into my house and come back. Like audacity. But I think people are being pushed to the brim. Even I, I think some people that are homeless in some states are being charged tickets for being homeless on top of not having anything in the first place where I feel like that's just a bridge to get them into the jail system so they can work free for the state. It's just a sick process that people really feel like we're going to raise the property taxes, which is going to make these landlords have to raise the rent, which is going to make a lot of people homeless, not even enough money saved to have to to be able to move to another state that they can afford. Um, they don't have a job lined up. Most people in the major cities that cannot afford the major cities, they don't have cars. They don't have a license. So I think people are feeling the pressure of not being able to do life, how they've been doing life, that they're just ready. To, they're Shout out to Biggie. They're ready to die. Facts. So, um, yeah, people are losing their shit. And, uh, I'm thankful and grateful that I'm not in the position to lose my shit like that. But if I didn't have the support system that I had and the um, tenacity to just weave through that hole, that is a possibility, (laughs) you know? So um, just be mindful, be kind to people. Um, if you don't need to honk your horn or yell out your window, don't do it. People are on edge. Um, people are supposed to be out celebrating and doing different festivities and then people are having straight shootouts. So yeah, think about that when you want to take your family out to a parade or some shit. Is it, do you really need to go to this parade? You know, but yeah, that's what I wanted to add. Um, shambipodden.com this is Lama Stereo my name is Shan that is Greg we will catch you next month I'll let you guys know when the next episode is Greg you have a great glorious Thursday night I'm gonna do this I'm gonna do that you do the same yes. and subscribe get your subscribe. asses in here we'll see yes. you yes bring it <laughs> <laughs>